welcome to Canada. This is Vancouver, a gorgeous city on the west coast of my home country. A city where nature is always within easy reach. The mountains, the ocean, the beach, it's all here. And the quick access to outdoor activities is very welcome when you're eating your way around the city as we do in this video. I'm going to show you what I ate in Vancouver as well as some of my other favorite spots. But first, I just have to show you the mountains to work up an appetite. Weekend hiking is definitely a thing in Vancouver, so we headed to the Dog Mountain Trail in North Vancouver with our friends. The hike is five kilometers round trip located on Mount Seymour, one of the mountains that keeps watch over Vancouver. This particular trail is a tangle of tree roots stretching out from the deep green forest around you. This was a picture perfect day with the sun even sparkling on the little pond we passed. Once you reach the lookout point, you have an incredible view looking south over Vancouver. Mark and I had a moment of Canadian pride and just pure joy, breathing in the mountain air and taking in such a beautiful scene. When you get down from the mountain, you can have brunch with the scores of other Vancouverites who are either fueling up pre-hike or maybe winding down post-hike. I suggest heading to 33 Acres. It started as a brewery in 2013, and you can now find delicious food and coffee here too. It's bright and minimalist inside, and you can feel the hum of happy weekend energy vibrating off of everyone. There's not a ton of seating, but we snagged the table and tucked into coffee and brunch. Mark had the beer waffles, which are different every week. His particular dish was macerated strawberries, mint, white chocolate chunks, whipped cream, and a dark chocolate drizzle. The rest of us got the avocado smash. Avocado, of course, along with feta, radish, cherry tomatoes, and pea shoots on sourdough toast. It's all topped with a soft boiled egg where the yolk is exactly the right amount of runny. So satisfying. The sourdough bread is locally made in the historic Gastown neighborhood at a cafe called Nelson the Seagull. So named for Nelson Mandela as the cafe's owners originally hail from South Africa. Sourdough and Nelson the Seagull are synonymous in Vancouver, and this is one of my favorite spots to sit. The tall ceilings, long wooden tables, and marked up floors give it a kind of lived-in elegance I love. This is where you find good-looking people eating good-looking food. There are lots of baked goodies on offer, but Mark and I kept it classic and shared an order of avocado on toast and poached eggs on buttered sourdough. This is definitely a firm favorite. A new Vancouver favorite is called Federal Store, where they also bake their own sourdough. It's a repurposed convenience store that's come back full circle because it actually began as a bake shop in 1922. It was constructed by architect John Coville, who built a lot of the homes in this Mount Pleasant neighborhood. The Coville Bake Shop was run by his wife, Hannah, until 1964, when it became a convenience store called Federal Store, named for a federal building across the street. The current owners kept the name and the sign, as well as all of those can't-be-bought touches of charm and collective neighborhood memory. You can feel the good energy here, like the building has exhaled and is happy to have reclaimed its identity. I had the coconut granola and yogurt with candy, ginger, and honey, and Mark had a buttery breakfast biscuit that comes with bacon or feta, egg, avocado, and garlic tomato butter. Federal Store isn't too far from the relaxed neighborhood of Kitsilano, a must visit whenever I'm in Vancouver. The local beach known as Kits is one of the city's most popular. It's full of people sunbathing and relaxing, swimming and doing other water activities. It feels decadent to be able to look up at mountains while wriggling your toes in the sand and ocean water. If Kits puts you in a beachy state of mind, there's a place called Hoke Poke close by, where, as you might guess, poke bowls fill the menu. Originally from Hawaii, these fresh seafood bowls have moved to the mainland and they're especially popular on the west coast. All the bowls at Hoke Poke, I just wanna say this name as many times as possible, come with a scoop of crab salad, seaweed salad, and ginger. And you can pick a base of either rice or greens. I got the ohana, which includes sweet shoyu dressing, sweet onion, green onion, cucumber, and a dry Japanese seasoning. For the fish, I went for two scoops of salmon. Mark had the ala moana with chipotle, cilantro, pico de gallo, and fish eggs called masago. New favorite thing, new favorite dance? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be dancing that all day. <laughs> If you're craving a post-poke coffee, head down the street to There There. 
It's a cafe dug out below the sidewalk, which seriously ups the cozy factor and makes for perfect people watching through the huge windows. The vibe here is Scandi minimalist with concrete floors, upcycled milk crate stools, feathery plants, and stone tabletops. They have a selection of baked treats along with buttermilk fried chicken sandwiches and Cubanos. The food sounded tempting, but we opted for lattes and just enjoyed sipping on our drinks and soaking in the calm atmosphere. One of my favorite Vancouver ice cream parlors is also nearby in Kitsilano, Rain or Shine. They use good quality local ingredients, and I love the story of how the owner started experimenting with the home ice cream maker in 2011, which led them to eventually opening their own shop. They have seasonal offerings like berry white and pink peppercorn lemon thyme sorbet, and a year-round menu with standouts like London Fog and Blueberry Balsamic. They have vegan options, gluten-free cones, and pints you can take home, so everybody's happy. I got Honey Lavender and their most popular flavor, Malted Milk Chocolate Honeycomb. I personally love my ice cream with lots of bits in it, and this delivers. You guys, this is good ice cream. Oh, it just dripped on your shirt. Oh, <laughs> Mark's having some difficulty with the melting situation. Yeah, it's melted chocolate. A lot of problems. <laughs> I got the meltiest ice cream they have. <laughs> A stone's throw away is Sophie's Cosmic Cafe, a beloved neighborhood fixture since 1988. If the root store next door doesn't give you the Canadian warm and fuzzies, then the antlers, Canadian flags, and super friendly staff will. Here, you get exactly what you want at a diner brunch. Big comfy booths to slide into, a bottomless cup of coffee, and the clatter of cutlery and chit chat. The sign outside says, this is a good place to start your diet, this is a good place to end your diet. And that pretty much sums it up. When you look at the specials board and see the words guacamole and Benny together, you order that. So Mark and I both had the guacamole and tomato Benny. His came with home fries and mine with fruit. Another neighborhood spot is Cafe Zen. Just follow the sea breeze back towards Kitts Beach. The cheerful yellow awning and small light-filled patio beckon from the street, and the feeling inside is relaxed and casual. Mark had his brunch favorite, huevos rancheros, and I had the eggs benny with BC smoked salmon. Ordering a benny is always a nice treat, and having fresh salmon when in British Columbia is a no-brainer. The portions are also generous for the price, which feels like good value. Another beach that's a little further west from Kitsilano is Spanish Banks. It's a great spot to gather and offers a beautiful look back at the Vancouver skyline. You can also see the opposite view of the Mount Seymour hike lookout point. Pretty cool to see the mountains from the beach and the beach from the mountains. That is Vancouver. Spanish Banks is located at one end of the seawall, also known as the world's longest uninterrupted waterfront path. Construction on the seawall began in 1917, and this walking and cycle path is now 28 kilometers long. You can start at Spanish Banks and take the seawall back downtown, seeing the amazing city views, marinas, wildlife, and birds along the way. If you follow the path back towards downtown, head to Cafe Medina for Belgian waffles and lavender lattes. Liberally apply chocolate sauce, obviously. Mm. Even though the waffle's not warm, really good but the sauce is the best part. There are lots of great places to eat, drink, hike and relax in Vancouver. Of course this is just a taste but it's been really fun to show you around this corner of Canada. Check out our other videos for lots more foods around the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did and make sure to subscribe for more travel adventures. Thanks for watching!